What is up y'all? Welcome back. We're here. We're doing it. This is the best of the best. I went through all of my drawers and all of my videos and I picked out all of the products that absolutely wowed me this year and this is always just a really great way to touch base at the end of the year for everybody. I do one mid-year and one at the end of the year. This is the big one. <laughs> And I have to admit, I get a little bit trepidatious coming into it because it's a lot to like declare something the best of the best of the year. But just to lighten the mood, throughout it I think I'm going to be just like making up superlatives along the way. I'm just gonna be like, this one is the biggest surprise that I thought I was gonna hate, or this is the one that pisses me off the most that I like it, or whatever, you know, things like that. I don't know. These are things I have written down in my notes app on my phone, but who knows if I'll ever look at them again. Can anyone relate? Yeah, so I have bags of things, bags, multiple bags of things that I have collected. Did I grab every single thing that I loved this year? Maybe not, maybe not. <laughs> if I forgot something, I will be sure to include it at least in the links down below. Everything will be linked down below. In past years, I am usually hoarse by the end of this video, so we'll see how it goes. But before we jump in, I have to go ahead and thank today's sponsor. Y'all, we are talking one last time this year about my good friends over at Ana Luisa. And this is the perfect time to shop Ana Luisa for meaningful gifts for your loved ones. If you're unfamiliar with Ana Luisa, they are some of the most beautiful, luxurious gold-plated jewelry. It is the jewelry that I'm wearing in every single video, every single Instagram post. These things are always on my body. If you're seeing jewelry, it's almost always on a Luisa. And I choose them because the longevity is there, the value is there. They're also climate neutral. They don't use any virgin mined gold, but they also have gold plating, silver, diamonds, fine jewelry. You can really find anything that you want for anyone that you love on Ana Luisa. And they have some amazing deals on their website right now that you can check out for all of your holiday gifting. I wanted to share some of my new items with y'all. Starting with, and I mean, I'm also wearing Ana Luisa rings that you can still get, but the these are, you know, not new. I wear these all the time, but this one. Isn't it gorgeous? It's so unique. It's got this beautiful knotting on either side of it. When I saw it, I just thought it was breathtaking. So it really looks like rope that's been looped around a ring. It's just so cool. It's like a very interesting, visually striking kind of statement piece, but it's so like lightweight and minimal at the same time. I love it. In fact, I would say that like striking, but lightweight and minimal is the theme of my new jewelry from Ana Luisa for this month, because the next one is this. I will, I'll just take it off so you can see what this thing looks like. This will fit any neck size. It's really, really easy to kind of like start it up here and pull down and you can also adjust it. But I love also wearing it like I had it, like underneath my collar because it's just this very solid, minimal, but again, visually attractive and striking kind of line right there on the collar. I love that. And it's also really beautiful to wear on skin. You know, if you have like something that has like an open neckline or something, it's incredibly elegant. And then the other one, I have actually been lusting after this one for a while. This is the little pebble. And and again, it's this beautiful organic shape, right? That's really striking. And because it's so dainty, it does a really good job of being part of a stack with something that is a little bit more bold like this necklace, but together, oh, and when you have a chain necklace with this one, they won't tangle. So yeah. That is my current stack on my neck, but I encourage y'all to go and check out everything on Ana Luisa's website. They are constantly coming out with new styles and there's really something for everybody. There are bold things, there are dainty things, there are timeless things, there are very modern things, you know, things that are a little bit more trendy and they really make fantastic, meaningful gifts for the holidays. Like there's something incredibly impressive about opening up gold jewelry as a gift. So check out Ana Luisa down below using my link and check out all of the amazing deals that they have going on on site right now for the holidays and and thank you to Ana Luisa for sponsoring a portion of today's video and for partnering with me in 2023. I have loved partnering with them. They are a brand that aligns with my values and I absolutely love their pieces. So thank you. And with that, y'all, let's tackle these bags of makeup because there's a lot here. There's a lot here. And honestly, I don't even think it's in any particular order. I was just like going Marie Kondo style. <laughs> I was like, does it give me the tingles? You know, put it in the bag kind of thing. And then I also had to do the like brain gymnastics 
gymnastics of being like, did this come out this year? All right, let's kick it off with a bang here. This is like one of the biggest game changers of the year. This is Mob Beauty. This is a brand that I've seen circulating the internet for a while now. A lot of my favorite creators were always talking about Mob Beauty, but I have to say, I was initially put off by the price point. It was like the buy-in for one of these palettes was over $100, and I was like, I don't know. I mean, it just kind of went to my back burner. But I did finally end up buying all of these. I picked all of these out for myself at the Credo sale this year. It was a pretty recent Credo sale. And my goodness, I mean, you can watch me in real time just get my socks knocked off over and over and over again by the just subtle elegance of these formulas. And then come to find out in my comments, a lot of people informed me that the founder is also one of the original co-founders of MAC. And so that's why they perform. It's a very different take on makeup than MAC, but these are cream products and powder products that perform so beautifully. They don't break up on the skin. They don't get oily or too dewy on the skin as a result of warming to your skin surface, you know, the way that some cream products do. And there is something to be said for that. A lot of people love a cream product that gets dewy once it touches the warmth of your skin, but these have a lot more wear time than other cream products that I've come across. They just do. They are high performing, they're understated, and they all come in, you know, sustainable refillable packaging. And they do sales pretty often, either on Credo or on the Mob Beauty website. So you don't have to pay that full, full price, but they actually reached out and sent me another palette because I loved this so much. So this will be in a future get ready with me in the new year, but it's kind of, you know, more in the cool tone family. Isn't that lovely? So yeah, Mob Beauty, big, big winner for me this year. Okay, this definitely has the distinction of best redemption arc, okay? Because I gave away every single one of my Persona cheek sticks to my friend Natalie because she loves them. I just couldn't get into them. I couldn't get into the formula. I couldn't get into the colors. Guess what? I'm wearing them right now because they put out two shades that absolutely changed my mind. And that is Mojave, which is a bronzer, and guava which is a blush and I just feel like I received a love letter from Persona. I'm not saying that you know they completely revamped the line when they released these. That's not my point. I'm not saying they're a different formula or anything like that. I just didn't find that any of the pigment loads really agreed with me. These are so subtle and neutral and this coral is one of the most satisfying corals I've ever seen. It reminds me very much of Virtue from Rare Beauty, and it's just an easier formula to use. I adore these, and honestly, like, if you had to ask me to pick a favorite, I don't know if I could, because they just work so beautifully in harmony with one another, so. The next is the Givenchy Prism Libre Powder, okay, and I always forget to mention that I have Voile Rosé. I don't know about all the other shades, and I did have a mishap either this year or last year where I screwed the lid on wrong and it got stuck permanently and became unusable. So, you know, beware that that possibility exists because this component is square and it's weird. But this is one of the most beautiful, blurring, make you mad kind of powders. You put it on you're like, yeah, it shouldn't do that. All oh, the gimmickry of it being four colors that mix together, it shouldn't do that. It shouldn't be that good, but it is. And you put it on and it looks like you just put a soft focus filter on your face and I have dry skin. I'm so susceptible to crepey under eyes. This doesn't do it. It doesn't give me crepey under eyes. It just blurs and it's beautiful. So I love it. The only thing that you should know is that it's scented, okay? So, you know, if it's, that's a deal breaker for you, don't do it. I became even more of a luxury queen this year. I just did. I just gravitated towards all of it. I blame all of my friends, but I also blame all of the luxury fashion houses for putting out beautiful makeup this year, okay? They made it practically irresistible. <laughs> I do find that like people find me now using search terms around like luxury beauty channels. So let's just all lean into it. <laughs> the next one here is the Couture Mini Clutch from YSL. This is a color story that is my kind of new project, right? It's like how I am moving into a more cool version of neutral. And this one really captures the essence of what I would do if I were putting together a quad. It hits every tone value, well, for fair skin. I mean, it's not like a deep, dark brown. There are several of these, but for the fair skinned of us and those of us who are not looking for a very, very dark brown, this is still quite pigmented. Like you can get a really, really great amount of depth out of this. It's just a matter of whether your skin is deeper than that. You know what I mean? It won't build a believable shadow. But on me, we're talking 
a light, a medium, and a deep. This is one of the most gorgeous shades ever right here. It's just this beautiful medium kind of Bambi color. And I mean, it is quite, you know, light, but on me, it comes off as a really great crease shade. And then this Celestial right here, it doesn't look like it's trying to steal the show. It's giving bridal. Like this quad really gives bridal in a subtle but sexy but elegant way. It's just great. And the formulas, I really can't say enough about them. I think that they remind me the most of Surat. They're incredibly soft. They don't have quite the grip that Surat does. Nothing is exactly like a Surat quad, okay? But this has that gorgeous, like, softness to it, and it blends so beautifully. And again, I get a little annoyed because there are a lot of companies out there just cranking out quads that don't make any logical sense to me, and this made sense and that is why I bought it. I also tried Surat for the first time this year and I did get a chance to try their eyeshadow quads. I don't know where mine is. I will put one on the screen so that you can see what they look like. Just let it be known that I have absolutely the highest praises to say about that eyeshadow formula. And there are going to be other Surat formulas in my favorites, but I sadly just misplaced that one, but I highly encourage you. Hmm. I highly encourage you, if you are looking to build your own quad, if that's something that you both feel comfortable doing and almost like feel more comfortable doing than using one that's pre-made, you, you know, want to have the freedom to pick your colors out yourself, the Surratt quads are worth it. And I have a discount code, 15% off, CAC15. Yeah. Let's keep moving. Okay. One that's not wildly expensive and I'm so impressed with. I have like really positive vibes when I touch this packaging. There's just something about this product that I always know it's going to work. This is the Fenty Eavesdrop Blur and Smooth Tint Stick. And I loved the Eavesdrop Liquid when she put that out, the skin tint. But over time, it would dry my skin out. Like it would look great the first couple of days. And then I would notice if I wore it day on day on day, my skin would just kind of get dehydrated. So I didn't wear it all the time, but I loved the look of it. And I do think that for anybody who is just a little bit more like normal combo oily skin, like it would work fine. Just my skin is super thirsty. This on the other hand, wowza, it is so like high performing because Fenty is high performing products, but this is so hydrating and gorgeous on the skin. I have shade two, which is great. I'm not sure if they all do, but this corresponds to the shade two in the original eavesdrop, which I just find to be so nice when we live in a world where pillow talk doesn't mean anything and Dolce Vita doesn't mean anything. <laughs> you know? Like at least the shades between the Fenty products make sense. So there's something really beautifully lightweight about it. It's very silicone-y when it goes on, but not over mattified and somehow still incredibly hydrating. It's beautiful. It really flexes with the skin and I feel like it will work for a lot of skin types. I can't call this release of the year because it didn't come out this year, but this might be product of the year for me in terms of just what I ended up loving the most because it blew my mind. Chanel Bohm Essentiel in Drage. And I have tried all of the shades. I mean, not, I don't own them all, but I've tried them all in store and they're all great, okay? I'm not gonna sit here and say that like Drage is the only one. They're so low pigment. It doesn't really matter which one you get. Oh, I just happen to like Drage. <laughs> telemarketer. Mm, hey bestie, definitely gonna pick that up. I just happen to like Drage because it's kind of the color I would go for in a highlighter anyway. Y'all, if you stopped listening when you heard Highlight Balm, Balm Essential, whatever, please perk your ears back up because this product does something nothing else does. Okay, I have tried the lit up stick from Westman Atelier and it's slippy and weird and it picks your makeup up. It's very pretty in theory, but only on bare skin. And it's like, when am I gonna use that? You know, I've, I tried X, Y, and Z, so many ways to use it and it just never worked for me and I ended up getting rid of it. This is the most elegant balm formula that when you put it on the skin, it rehydrates whatever is underneath it. So if you've got eyeshadow or concealer with powder on top underneath your eyes and you tap that on top, it both, because of the Drage color, color corrects a little bit, but also brings your skin back to life. You could be walking through New York City because that is what I was doing when I bought this. I went into the Chanel Atelier in Soho and I touched my finger to this and I touched it underneath my eyes. And it illuminates and it rehydrates, but it doesn't disturb the makeup underneath. 
it's an immaculately conceived product. And I don't say that about everything from Chanel. I love their complexion products, but they have put out some like stick blushes that I was like, what is this? But this one is the one. And I always say, you know, you do something dewy on camera. It's not as flattering. I promise you in person, this is youth. This looks like youth, okay? And it sticks around. It's awesome. Another gorgeous in-person purchase from the Chanel Atelier in New York is the LeBlanc Rosy Light Drops from Chanel. So this is 50 bucks, you know, Chanel pricing. You get a full ounce of this beautiful, beautiful kind of priming highlighter serum, okay? Has a scent. Does Georgie have a scent? No. This has a scent. I personally, of all of the luxury houses, I love the Chanel scent. It kind of smells to me like <laughs> magic sizing. If y'all ever had, you know, had to like press your own clothes or whatever, starch them. It's like clothing starch, so it smells like, like clean to me. Either way, it's not as highlightery as a highlighter, and I have used it today just kind of gently you know, around the places on my face that I would highlight before I put my foundation on. And I'm wearing the Chanel Sublimage L'Etat, which I did not try for the first time this year. Oh no! I'm going to see Tom for New Year's and I'm going to force them to give me their Sublimage L'Etat. I'll probably buy it from them because they didn't like it. And I'm just like, I'm out and we wear the same shade. And I was a really big influence in them buying it. So like, I feel responsible. So I'll buy it from them. That combination, dewy, gorgeous, radiant without being sparkly skin. I mean, there's no sparkle. In my last video, when I swatched the Kosas against, well, I didn't I swatch it against anything. Let's do it. For science, I want to show you all the difference between the Chanel Rosy Light Drops and the Kosas Glow IV, okay? I'm gonna use the tiniest bit of the Glow IV and spread it all the way out. There's nothing serum-y about it. Do you see how that's Tin Man? And then this is just like this really subtle glow. Is that visible? Can you really see that? I think you can see that there's coverage here. My hand is gold. And then this is just giving like this gorgeous version of my skin. But the Chanel looks like a healthy serum. The Kosas looks like it's exposing every imperfection in my skin. So I think that this is lovely. I really like the Givenchy highlighter that they came out with in the same container as the concealer that I love. But from a cost effectiveness standpoint, if you're not looking for something that's quite as highlighter as that is, I would just go for this. I know it's weird to talk about Chanel as a bargain, but like, here we are in the year of our Lord, 2023, almost 2024. Blech, looks gross. I have these very fancy makeup wipes. Ah, they're very wet also. Thank you, Florasis. We already smoked 30 minutes. I cannot believe it. Okay, next. I have caught wind that this is available in Europe, so I don't feel so bad talking about this because if you are in the US and you covet these that much, you can still get them. You just have to get them shipped from Europe. And if you're in Europe, Go off, girl. You can still get these. These are the fall, the Equinox blushes from Chanel and they're stupid, okay? Like they're so good. They're so satisfying. Where's my other one? This is the coral and this is the mauve. The challenge of this video is to find new ways of saying something is great because I'm gonna just sit here for, you know, an hour and God knows how long and just tell you how great all these things are. But these are so bananas. They're so unique. Oh look, you can see my eyes, <laughs> she said in ADHD. I will swatch them for you real quick. Look at those colors. They're not what you think. Yeah, they both have like a teeny tiny bit of shimmer in them, but not something that you would necessarily clock from like kissing distance. But the mauve is so uh, desaturated. It's almost gray. It's like when you're looking for that like tawny beige, almost bruise color for your cheeks. You know what I'm talking about. For every person who just winced, there was another person who was like, thank God, that's exactly what I've been looking for, okay? So don't let the word mauve fool you. It is just a cool beige and it's really, really effective. I love wearing it with a cool toned eye and Chanel Boy lipstick. So good. And then this is a very easy to wear coral, as a matter of fact. It would go really well, I think, with what I'm wearing right now. I'm wearing, like I said, the Mojave and Guava, which, you know, is that same kind of coral thing. But I'm wearing the NARS Breathless Lipstick, 
which is also decidedly kind of peach, and I feel like it would go really beautifully with that. Y'all know I'm passionate about a tonal look, especially when it comes to trying to make colors work that you're excited about that aren't necessarily native to your skin. A lot of times it's about building the entire look around one tone, so these are very helpful in that. Dior Backstage Rosigo blushes are out. Givenchy Prism Libre blushes are in, okay? I'm making a declaration. Now, is this the easiest delivery system in the world? No, but it's worth it in my opinion. So these Givenchy Prism Libre blushes come in shades that are so comparable to what Dior thinks that they just invented. And absolutely no shade on Dior. I just know that when they redid the line, everybody was really excited about those new Rosy Glow blushes. And then they reformulated them and they made them kind of chalky. So it was like, what was the point? So I think a lot of people are kind of looking for a better alternative, especially in the luxury space for them. These are Gorgeous. So like there's this one, which is the coral and then voile coral, mm -hmm, French. And there's also the mousseline one, which is just such a dead ringer for rosy glow, the 001 pink. <sighs> yeah, y'all. It's just a prettier, more effective, finely milled, elegant kind of finish on the skin. It's never gonna hard pan on you. I just love them. I love them and I think that the colors are genius. I saw Hindash use them and I was like, do I need those? And he was like, yeah, you do. So he was right. He's almost never wrong. I don't know if he's ever loved something that I don't like. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. I mean, if we're talking about concealers, which we weren't, but I will. The Prism Libre Skin Caring Concealer from Givenchy was an absolute standout favorite this year. I honestly feel like it happened so long ago that maybe it's like drifting to the back of my mind in terms of being release of the year, but like, it's so important. Everybody freaking loves this stuff. There we go. I wasn't centered. Girl, I mean, am I ever really centered? And Hoodles. This is shape tape for 30 plus. If you are a person with any kind of under eye complaints, I mean anybody can use it. It's just so hydrating and gorgeous. Pretty good price for what it is. I'm very quickly working my way through this one and I have two backups. So if that tells you how I feel about it. This is just one of those things that's like gonna go down in history as just being a really, really great release. Like 10 years from now on TikTok, they're gonna be reviving it thinking they invented it. It's gonna be the next like black honey. They're gonna be like, oh, remember when my mom used to use this concealer? Like, yeah, it, it, it's just gonna be one of those. So it also wears beautifully as a foundation. Okay, let's talk about this. I said that there were going to be some Surat products in here. I think this might be the main one that we're talking about today. This is the Souffle shadow, specifically in the shade Ciel de Ray. This is, and has the distinction of being, my one and done shadow, everybody. Look, it goes with everything that I'm wearing right now. It's that perfect, nudey, orangey, goldy peach that is so ideal for my skin tone, especially look at it against the Chanel Coral Blush, but it's a little bit more neutral and it has just the right amount of sheen. Let's talk about the formula real quick, okay? Because she's a little funky. It feels like amphibian skin. It's a little bit damp. It's a little bit squishy. It's a lot of bit squishy. It does, it feels like you're kind of pushing on a frog's back. That's, that's how it feels. And I like it. I think that it's fascinating and I love this color. I tried the other ones and they're actually really easy to work with. You can pick them up on a brush and things like that. But the thing that I just really adore about this is just once you get it on, it stays on. It's not going anywhere. It's a beautiful, beautiful product. It's a lot of bit squishy. It does. It feels like you're kind of pushing on a frog's back. That's, that's how it feels. It kind of reminds me, it's like almost like someone took the old lid, the star from Glossier, I'm telling you y'all, it's in there. All that information of every piece of makeup I've ever used, it's still in here and it's like not good because other things are being sacrificed. Lidstar, <laughs> what is that, like 2018, 2017? Good grief. It's like they took that, except the colors are better and they put it in a pot because that's exactly what it's like. It's, it's like it shouldn't be as wildly long wearing as it is, but once it's down, it's down and it's that easy to work with. It's so good. These stole my heart recently. Extreme extremely recently, and these are the Dior Mono shadows. Like, get real, girl. Get real, girl, because I have, and it's really worth mentioning, because I have said very not nice things <laughs> about the Dior Quints in the past, because they're all, and Tom, at least Tom agrees with me on this. Tom and I will die on this hill together. But the, the Quints from Dior are all the same tone value, and so they end up kind of being sooty, and they don't do anything that creates any dimension on the eyes. I've said it so many times I can't even remember how to say it. So 
the Chanel quads suffer from the same thing. Even some of the Tom Ford quads are like that, where the colors are just too close to each other. And so you're just like, I don't, I can't build a look out of this. It all looks the same once it gets on my skin. And Tom made a really great point. They were like, I think Dior's shadows exist in their best form as singles. And I was like, yeah, because you know, when you try and combine them, it's not intuitive the way that they decide to put them into palettes kind of thing. But as singles, they're awesome. So this is oddly enough, poncho. Not sure why they called it poncho. Could have called it so many other things. Beige mitts is somewhere around here. But they're both so lovely and I want more of these. I just think that they're really, really great and I've ended up using them a lot since I got them. Uh lot. There was a win in the form of Sephora collection this year. Okay, so I pulled a few things from Sephora collection because I just think that they're worth exploring, especially if you're on a budget. There's just something to be said for being able to find things at a drugstore price. They do tend to put them on sale quite a bit, so there's something to be said for that, but they are kind of a drugstore price. They are in such unique colors. You can't get usually, I don't wanna make you know one big broad statement, but you usually can't get this subtle of a color story in these formulas at the drugstore per se, but you can get it from Sephora Collection because they are business daddy. So they don't have to prove their worth to business daddy. They can just do whatever they want. And so they have weird colors and it's awesome. These are not necessarily the weirdest colors of all time, but I did pick out, I don't know, some interesting, like this is their lacquer lipstick and it is the closest thing to the candy glaze that I have found. It's a little more pigmented than the candy glaze, but look at that. It looks a lot like uh, the brown one that Tom loves that I bought for them. I can't remember the name of it right now. It's a little bit less quite so dewy, but it also doesn't have the fruit smell, which could be a big plus, and it's also not $40, so there's that. I love, love their eyeshadows. The one thing is I would just, woo, this is so satisfying. I would recommend if you do wanna buy one of their eyeshadows, being someone who has a palette lying around to like magnetize them into, they really don't. This component is where they skimmed. It just doesn't make any sense. They love to just like close and never open again, and they they love to just like slide around in there and stuff, but like look at that freaking color. That is shock chalk. I mean, as you interact with it, it just doesn't even make sense how foiled it is. Oh, let me tell you a tale. Let me tell you a tale about a Prada foundation. I wore this again yesterday just to make sure I had my thoughts together on it. It's still so good. This has been a saga of me trying to get well, first it was a saga of me trying to get it. And then it was a saga of us trying to get it in the United States. And then once it was in the United States, I was perfectly happy to order it from Selfridges, but no, it arrived in the United States right before Tom's birthday. And I wanted Tom to try this because this is a very good foundation for a lot of different skin types. And I thought that they would really like it. And it was right around their birthday. I bought it for them, but I bought it from the Prada website because it had just come to the Prada Beauty website. I bought it from my phone. I picked the right color. The wrong color arrived and we didn't know that until Tom opened it because their confirmation emails don't tell you what shade you bought. They're just like, you bought a foundation, enjoy. And it's like, okay. I didn't even get a chance to like confirm whether I did the right thing. So I write to them. I say, I need to return it. They go, sure thing, baby. By the way, it was your fault. You ordered the wrong color. And I was like, okay. So since it was with Tom, I ended up making a prepaid label, sending it to Tom so Tom could return it. But Tom was waiting to get the box. Not that they don't have boxes, but it was just gonna be like an easy switcheroo because I I went ahead while I was sitting there right in front of Tom in Philadelphia when we were hanging out and bought the right shade for them. And they were waiting, 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 waiting for weeks for this foundation to arrive in LN5, which is the correct shade for us because we are skin twins and it just never came. And so I reached out to them. I WhatsApped them. I talked to Prada, even though Prada and Prada Beauty apparently are completely different entities. And so they were just like, eh. And so finally my, the last straw, because no one would get back to me. It had been months. I just, disputed it on my credit card bill. Cause I was like, I didn't get the thing I paid for and it was like 80 bucks. <laughs> and so then, then I get the email from Prada Beauty being like, well, you didn't, oh my God, you didn't get your foundation? That is such a bummer, what? Because the tracking was telling Tom every single day that it was going to arrive by the end of the day because even though I paid for shipping from a luxury company, which I shouldn't have to do, I should have a luxury experience. They still took the cheapest route for shipping, which is last mile, which means that they're gonna FedEx it to the post office and the post office is gonna deliver it. <coughs> 
when they feel like it, which in this case was never. And so I got a text from Tom last week or maybe even earlier this week that was just like, is this the right shade? And I was like, holy bananas, Tom, is this the completion of the circle right now? They actually have the foundation in their hands. Now, uh, October, November, December, two months after I ordered it. So I recommend buying this in person if possible because it's so gorgeous and the component is awesome that you just replace this glass thing on the inside and this part makes it travel safe and I'm just angry about it because I even had a hard time getting it because it Herod's and uh, it was a whole thing. It was just a whole thing. Buy it from Selfridges. It's the easiest way to shop it. It's inexpensive on Selfridges, I wanna say. It's like 50 bucks. And then you end up paying $30 to ship it, or you could pay 80 bucks to get it from Prada in the US. It's pretty much the same price, and Selfridges is actually going to get it to you. <laughs> I know it's silly, but it is what it is. I do, I recommend this formula so wholeheartedly, but I do not recommend the Prada Beauty customer service experience. It shouldn't have had to be like that. Okay, I wanna give a brief mention to one of my favorite things that came out this year, my favorite things that happened this year, and that was these blushes from Finding Ferdinand because I formulated them myself and I love them very, very muchly. This is Olay, just the, the medium beige color. I have seen this on so many people, all of the colors, on so many people. This collection just was a smash and I loved how it looked. The release had a lot of hiccups. It was not ideal. It was not my favorite experience, the way that it all shook out, and it was certainly not how I intended for it to happen happen, but I'm so proud of the colors, I'm so proud of the formulas, and I'm so happy with the way that it was, you know, received and when people got it in their hands. So I wanted to thank y'all for that, for my, you know, my first real collab ever not being, not being perfect, but I think that the products were perfect, so I liked that. <laughs> Another concealer that we're going to talk about here, so this, as I told you, this is in no particular order. The Tower 28 concealer, I have actual final thoughts here on the House Labs concealer because I think that these are going for the same thing. How Slabs, I am actually wearing it today. I decided to try it one last time for this video, and what this does is it doesn't have quite as much coverage, but it illuminates, except this does a better job of exactly that. You don't have to powder it. It's beautifully illuminating. The shade range is named weird, but the colors are good, and it's $22. <laughs> Just knocked it straight out of the park. Oh, what? what's that? Just a beautiful piece of art? This is Hermes Prunoir. Oh, it's so Pretty. This was one of those things where as I was looking at it in a tepid takes video, my chatting about new beauty releases video, I saw it and I was like, those are pretty. They're designed by Pierre Hardy. And it was kind of around Halloween and I feel like the whole stack of them together made it look very Halloween-y and I was like, that's just weird. But then I scrolled to the next image and I think in real time you can watch me on that video go, oh, it's a bomb because I saw these really deep colors, right? And I was like, okay, Halloween, you know, like Hermes is getting into Halloween or whatever. Uh-uh, it's a bomb. It's a beautiful bomb. And on olive skin, oh my God, this is just the one. And people have speculated that I have olive toned skin. I just used to film with a tree outside my window that reflected green on me, but it still works beautifully on me. Again, it's just one of those things where I have to really build the look around it, but it's so easy to wear because it's a bomb. I know I'm being so annoying. I'm like, in what we do in the shadows, he's like, but this is science. He's like, but this is a tattle. I, I, I adore it because it's a bomb. This has a superlative. I'm not calling this best of the year, this has a superlative of most anticipated thing that I got in my hands this year, okay? Because there were many, but this was one of the ones that like lived in the ether for so long and we still have products that we thought were going to exist and this just never did. Natalie right now is screaming at the screen, what about that Chanel balm? There was like this weird Chanel balm that I think finally got released in Europe, but it looked like a gigantic pan, like a pot of like Becca under eye corrector. And it's like, I wanna know what it is. Me and Hindash went into the Chanel Atelier. We were like, where is it? What is it? And they were like, we don't know what you're talking about. So that still doesn't exist, but the Tom Ford Rose Lip Oil was something that lived in infamy on my channel. It was another one where I saw it on my Tepid Takes video and I was like, I want that because it's stupid. <laughs> Fully admitting that I have a kink for stupid and that's stupid and I want it. It was like $70, I bought it with my own money because I'm stupid and I just enjoy crap like this, okay? I know that it's dumb. So it's this beautiful package of clear lip oil. It's very effective as a lip oil and it smells like roses, okay? So like, that's all it is and I love it. Mm. 
If you're not into rose, don't do it. It's very, very, very rosy. Did it do anything visible? No, I am not telling you to buy this. I'm not telling you to buy this. In fact, I'm telling you not to buy this. Don't buy this, it's stupid. Unless you like stupid things. On my honor, I like stupid things, okay? And that's why I like it. Oh, it's so much, oh yosh, oh yosh. Mm -hmm. I think these came out this year and I'm gonna talk about it anyway because I don't think that I've given it enough love in general, but I've used the living daylights out of this eyeshadow this year. This is Crystal Constellation specifically, this shade from Phytosurgeons because Phytosurgeons put out a couple of incredible bangers this year. I believe that one of the collections that came out this year, if memory serves, is the fact that they did a warmer eyeshadow collection because they did do, you know, a lot of kind of like cool tone, unabashedly beautifully cool toned eyeshadows for a long time. Now, Crystal Constellation is verging on bedroomized brown, but even though these are warm, the shimmer is still cool. So it's very easy to wear as like someone in you know, a neutral lover or something, but like I'd love to see something with some gold shimmer in it. Jason. But yeah, no, this was like one of the toppers that I reached for constantly because these are the easiest things. I mean, look, it looks like what I have on my eyes right now. This, I'll show you what I have on my eyes right now. <laughs> You've never seen it on my channel before, but you know, it's a really quick way to accomplish that vibe and they don't move. They don't budge. They're awesome. We're done with one bag. So you want to see what I have on my eyes right now? Because, uh, it's really good. It's this little duo, this little holiday duo from Bobby Brown. What? Like, I'm not even sure I'm calling this a favorite, but like, what? Look at that freaking bro, what? That's what I put on my eyeballs. I wanna put a little bit more on. And then that's the duo shade that goes with it. Y'all, it is the most effective instant eye look. Bobbi Brown makes giftable holiday makeup, I swear. This just makes sense. This makes sense and it's got the same beautiful filigree on the top of it that that bronzer palette did. I, I don't know how I missed this one, but like, ugh. Look at that freaking bronze. Freaking bats, I love Halloween. That is one of the best bronzes I've ever seen. Lived in, grungy, but at the same time, like sexy, I, woo! Is this new? I have no idea. I tried this for the first time this year and it is so important to me. This is the Ciate. Do I, I don't have another Ciate thing in my entire collection. I don't care. The Ciate Dewy Skin Vitamin C Glass Glow Primer. Y'all, run, do not walk. If you have dry skin, it is a game changer. This is the thing that when you wake up in the morning and you go, how, how am I going to get to skin looking like skin because my skin is so dry, what in the heck? Like my skincare is not gonna do it. This is like the cosmetic version of it because it's actually gonna cooperate with your makeup. It's so good. So it's Dewy Primer, Vitamin C, Dragon Fruit, and Yuzu. Uh, it's just so pretty. It's like you hardly need any of it and it's the perfect weight on the skin and look at that just like, Mmm, mmm, and that's how it dries. That's what it looks like when it's even all done. It's so good. It's so good. Cause I've used dewy primers and they end up just being kind of like serums that soak in like this one, you can tell. I'm giving a little bit of sweaty and I'm here for it. Somebody said in my last video that Uma's not doing well. I still love Uma and everything that they did this year. And this bronzer right here was a game changer for me. So this is a double take sculpting and bronzing powder in white pearl. And it is so pale. I love that Uma does these like audacious shades that are so close to people's skin tones they're just really aware you know they're just super informed not just in the fact of making a large shade range but that like the shades have great undertones to them like they have like true human skin tone undertones to them so this bronzer is so subtle and it's so easy to use and I love this Teeny tiny, just like such a thin little component. Yeah, I just think they nailed it. I love this. Another absolute revelation that came out of Fight of Surgeons this year is their bronzer. I pulled shade three, I wear shade two, but I ended up bringing a bunch of them over to my friend Rebecca's house so that she could get matched to one because I could wear lots of shades in this. It's 12 shades and they behave like nothing you've ever seen in your life, okay? I've seen wide shade ranges for bronzers. That's fantastic, but this is a very self-funded company. These bronzers are just weird in the best way possible, okay? They do something so subtle. Nothing else that I have ever used that claims to have a true skin finish actually has a true skin finish like this does. You can put this on bare skin and it just looks like you actually have a tan, you actually have bronze skin, and it also works on top of makeup, but like this is one of the most natural looking things I've ever used in my life and it's very, very effective and I can't compare it to anything. 
that. You just gotta touch it yourself. So kudos. This was a groundbreaking release this year. Ugh, we hate to see it, but we love it so much. This is the actually the peach one, Pillow Talk Peach Pop. I don't know where the other one is. It's someplace where I loved it you know, and packed it somewhere to take it. And then I just don't know what I did with it. But this is the Pillow Talk Matte Beauty Blush Wand from Charlotte Tilbury. And this has absolutely no right to be as good as it is. This is a flawless product and it makes me mad, honestly. It's this dumb sponge, right? That shouldn't work. Works flawlessly, you just go on your face and then you spread it out with a brush and you're golden. This is much more pigmented than the other one though. That Pillow Talk shade is so beautifully desaturated and pink and just perfect. And it doesn't look like anything else that's called Pillow Talk in her entire collection because she has no adherence to order at all. I love it, love it for her. Was she an air sign? I bet she's an air sign. Nailed it, astrology is science. Anyway, yeah, this is a flawless release. I don't love everything from Charlotte Tilbury and I don't even think that a lot of the stuff that I do like is necessarily worth the price, but like this is actually a good amount of product. For the money, the colors are awesome. The delivery system actually works and it is stupid easy to use. So darn it. It's great. Oh, there's the eyeliner. Yeah, I put it in the other bag. So yeah, this is the Tiramisu eyeliner. That is the exact same color as Espresso Matte from the Sephora collection. And I love it. Great, great, great waterproof eyeliner. I did it, I got the word eyeliner in. I, it could have been anything, it was a total crapshoot. An amazing release this year. This is a really beautifully high performing product from the brand CL. This is Nikki DeRost's newest project. She was also the founder of Rowan. And this is the Tint and Protect SPF 50 Tinted Serum. Not only do I really enjoy this formula for all of its subtleties, it's just like a much more sophisticated version of something like the Glossier Skin Tint and it does have effective sunscreen in it. Not so much that you would want to wear it solely, you know, because it is quite sheer, but it's going to help in a way that's consequential in a substantial way. It performs really beautifully and all of the people that I have seen review it, the shades seem great. So I have shade 03 light and it just seems to be a really well informed shade range and the undertones are really gorgeous. It's a winner. I can't wait to wear it in the summer, you know, because it's just super, super lightweight. And it does remind me a little bit of the Glossier in the sense that when you put it on, you're like, that's not that much coverage, but it wears with the integrity of a real foundation. So you can wear any other makeup on top of it and it's not gonna get all slushy and weird. So I think it's a really great one. Ooh, I'm looking in this bag and I just see greatness. Just greatness, okay? I'll get one of my like weird controversial favorites out of the way before I get into <laughs> the crowd pleasers because this was either for you or it wasn't, but I'm obsessed with it. And it is the Danessa Myricks Groundwork Defining Neutrals Palette because this is just how I think, right? You know, it's basically if I had an entire collection of eyeshadow sticks and their corresponding eyeshadow powders, and then someone just smacked them all into a palette together. And that's how they perform. The putties do perform like an eyeshadow stick. And then you also have shadows that go with them. And it just kind of has everything that I need right there without having to pull out a bunch of eyeshadow sticks. That said, if you are only gonna use two shades in this, just get eyeshadow sticks in those shades. But that's exactly how I think of this and it's super, super functional to me because she's got all of the range of light and dark and she's also got really great subtle and some extreme like undertone shifts. Hi, I committed a criminal act in neglecting to mention how much I love the Danessa Myricks skin tint, the Yummy Skin Serum Skin Tint that came out this year. I have sung its praises all year long and somehow it just sat in my foundation drawer while I made this video probably screaming at me, so. But I'm correcting the oversight before this video comes out. <laughs> it is the skin tint vibe, but with like 20% more coverage. That's why I like it is because it helps with all of my like discoloration and stuff, but it still wears like a skin tint and looks like a skin tint. Like it still looks like you're not wearing very much makeup, but it just gives me a little bit more confidence. I love it. I think it's beautiful. Ooh, gotta hand it to my friend Rudy, the Bubel Berry Freckled Pen. If you want believable freckles, this is going to give them to you. It's very, very easy. This little applicator is so ideal. I have to give her props. This was fantastic. Oh, well, we have to mention these. I'm pretty sure these came out this year, right? The, I mean, these were the original thing that made me start thinking differently about eyeshadow sticks, and they still remain my favorite eyeshadow sticks. Trench and Pecan from Victoria Beckham. And you know what? I got these for Tom for their birthday, and they were a little trepidatious at first. They were like, I don't know, because they used it with an eyeshadow primer. And I did the same thing the first time that I used them. It doesn't need that. It doesn't need any kind of canvas. It doesn't need any kind of primer or it will kind 
kind of like seize up too quickly, it works perfectly on its own. And so you can see pecan, <laughs> your girl's seen better days, okay? Like I use the crap out of these. And Tom relayed exactly what I said about it back to me. They were like, you start with pecan, you just smack it into the crease on the outer corner, and then you go in with trench kind of everywhere else, you blend it together, and then you get to just decide what kind of glitter, shimmer, whatever the heck you want on your lid, and you're done, you're done. It's the fastest I look in the world. It's so great, and like they don't go anywhere. They don't budge. This is a fantastic formula. I love these. I love these so much. It's as good as everyone says that it is, and if they didn't say that it's good, I will tell you that it's good. This is cinnamon from Victoria Beckham. Oh my God. It is finally bedroomized brown in the form of an eyeliner. Oh my God, it's so pretty. I can't stop using it. So this is the Victoria Beckham Sat Satin Kajal Eyeliner, which is already my favorite eyeliner formula because it's super like gel slidey, you know? And so it goes on really smoothly, but once you get it, it allows you a good bit of time to finesse it. And then once you get it all finessed, it sticks down. It's fantastic, like it's done. And this color is just everything. It's just everything. It's everything I wanna wear on my eyes and it works so beautifully. Because a lot of people talked about bronze behind your eyelashes and like it's gonna give you this really soft eyeliner look. Too soft for me, <laughs> too soft for me. And they came out with like Night Flash and they had a couple of other ones that were similar, but nothing quite like cinnamon and cinnamon is the one. It's the one. Another release that I really enjoyed this year that was like highly anticipated and when it finally came around I could have been horribly disappointed and I wasn't and that was these from Armani. These are the Luminous Silk Blushes and I adore them and they came out with some really great shades and then there's just an exciting release. I like them a lot. So this and the beige and it was just like my summertime combo. If y'all remember before my collection came out this was my summertime combo so and the component leaves a little to be desired you know. I do wish that like all of this didn't like scratch off so much but I'm brutal to my makeup. I'm just like constantly moving things around. So either way, I mean, it's not as pretty as like a Gucci component, but it's a far better formula. Okay, a lot of these I tried for the first time this year and that they are not new. So that is how the lips are gonna go. And then that is gonna be it. And I think we will land on the release of the year. <laughs> All the other ones have been runners up. <laughs> okay, we have the Clarins Lip Oil. This is the Lip Comfort Oil. I love this so much, and when I get done with it, I will buy it again. Oh, just make sure you're not buying the one that's color changing, but this one smells delightfully of like snow cones. I'm a huge fan of this, as you can see. It's just lovely. I love the big, luxurious doe foot. Everything about it just gives luxury. I love it. We have the Givenchy La Rouge Sheer Velvet in the shade 10, because what the heck? That is the best color I've ever seen. <clears throat> This has that amazing matte formula that's sheer enough, but it's like when you put it on, it doesn't build on itself. It only goes to one perfect level of coverage on your lips. It's brilliant. The only thing it does have a scent. I have a theory, and that is that if I were to find some way to make sure dust didn't collect in them, and if I could like set my stuff out for just a, a period of time, even just in an open room, right? Eventually I think the scent would dissipate to a large degree. Cause like if you smell some of these things that are sitting on displays in like department stores, you can't really smell the scent. I think the scent would go away if you left them open. And I wonder like what the breaking point would be between like preserving the integrity of the product so it didn't like, you know, expire really soon, but also just like opening a window. You know what I mean? Just like letting a little bit of the fragrance burn off because it's kind of wild on some of these, but this is not too bad. It's just kind of powdery floral, but like, look at that color. It is, it is my nipple color. <laughs> And that is what we we're all in pursuit of, right? It's truly like that perfect, my lips put better, but in a matte. It's just sexy, I love it. My lip gloss from my collection. This is a smash hit, everybody loves this. It's very easy to love because it is literally a suspension of gold and silver glitter, like so much gold and silver glitter. And it smells so awesome. It smells like limoncello, it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. So yeah, this is my sparkling limoncello lip gloss that I did with Finding Ferdinand. You might still be able to buy it. We made a surplus and we didn't do a very good job of announcing that there was going to be, you know, a restock, like a brief restock. And I don't think anybody knew. So they might even still be able to get it. I don't know. But it's really good. This is another one that happened to me this year. This was one of those things that Shelby Wilson, I saw her, she had done a couple of sponsorships with Armani Beauty. She put this on and we're collected very similarly. And I was like, what is that? That is a perfect beige lipstick and I love the component. And it is 102 in a lip power. It's called something. 
Romanza. Romanza. See? I'm telling you, it's all in my brain. It is in there. It's just a matter of getting to it. I've been watching a lot of Stanley Tucci searching for Italy, so like that could have been wrong. I'm not sure, but I think it's called Romanza. Almost bought this side and scene. I swatched it on the back of my hand when I was in Sephora with Steph and Natalie in DC. And when I applied it while we were walking down the street, what is that? What is that? Is that just my eye? Oh, we were walking down the street, I applied it, and they both looked at me and they were like, yes. So it's almost too light for me. Like it goes really well with a lip liner. I love the component. I love the shape. It's just hunky chunky. It's not backing away from being a gosh darn component. Okay. Like I like it. Okay. Let's talk about a couple of my faves. I feel like this was pretty early on in the year. And so you've probably heard me talk about them a lot, but I actually saw on my friend Lauren, boldly Lauren, who she doesn't post that much anymore. At least it doesn't show up on my feed, but she posted, I think either a gifting or a sponsorship with La Perla Beauty. And I didn't know that La Perla made beauty. They just make lingerie and guess who can't wear lingerie? because I don't have a bra size. So like I've never been, they've never been on my map. So I saw that like I could have, it's called the lipstick effect that I could buy from this luxury brand, but I didn't have to buy their luxury underwear because I'm not going to dry clean my underwear. Something about me. I decided to look at their lipsticks and while the colors online are more nuanced looking than they are in person. Okay. They've been kind of Photoshopped to look a little bit more grayish than they are. Look at the embossing on the outside of this. It's crazy. I love it. So pretty. Regardless, I got these in the mail and I was was not unimpressed, okay? I have the Satin Balm in 203 Espresso Lips and I have the Matte Silk Lipstick in 110 Cinnamon Red. I won't complain about either one of them, okay? Espresso Lips, Cinnamon Red. These are shades that I didn't know I could wear, but they are that perfect kind of toasted coral. They've got a little bit of peach to them, one a little more so than the other, but comfortable, smell like vanilla, thank God. I love when a lipstick smells like vanilla and I've actually been kind of thinking that this look because of kind of the peach on my cheeks and everything would have gone well with one of these today. So let's do it. I'm going to go with espresso lips. This is the satin lip balm. So this is the sheerer of the two. This made me fall in love with lipstick. These made me fall in love with lipstick because they're just so easy and they make me feel so beautiful. They're really nourishing. They're just very easy colors to wear. I can't say enough. And also replaceable. Look at the component too. I mean, the component is gorgeous. Drop dead gorgeous. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So La Perla knocked my socks off this year. Oh, there's Paige Mitza. Hey baby, there's Paige Mitza. Oh, she's so cute. Look at that. That's a great shade. Okay. At least we got to see it. And I know where she is. She's not like kicking around somewhere partying. The next one I have here is, I believe this is called Beige Trench, this shade. And this is in the Rouge Pure Couture lipstick from YSL. I fell in love with this formula also. They did just send me another shade in this and you'll see it in, you'll see it on my Instagram. On my Instagram, I said YSL sent me a red lip and it is the shade Rouge Muse. I don't ever wear a red lip, but I decided to because they sent it to me and I loved it. I constructed an entire look around it. I will say, much easier for me to wear this. So, beige trench and this formula, wow, that's actually just like, yeah, it's, it's the color of my nipples again. So there you go, that's why. <laughs> but you can see now why this is a little bit peach, you know, and this is a little bit more kind of neutrally beige. Isn't that interesting? But it's just a very, very easy to wear formula. They do have the Pure Couture, the Bold is what it's called. And that's going to be a slightly less creamy formula. Like it's gonna be a little bit more matte and finish, I think. And it's definitely like higher in pigment. So I have one of those as well. It's not my favorite. I like it okay. But this formula is, I think, pretty darn new or at least re-released and it is super creamy and super comfortable and I love this color N1. Completely on the other end of the spectrum, the Prada lipsticks, this is the soft matte. They have like a true matte, I think that is, I don't even know, I didn't try it. But yeah, Prada monochrome soft matte lipstick and this is in the shade 176. I can't remember what it's called, but it's the, it's the number 176. This is the longest wearing, most beautiful lipstick. It'll make you mad. It's just like you put it on and you're like, that's not gonna work. And then when you do, you're just like, oh, Oh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. It has such a fragrance to it. It's really perfumey. My goodness. So like you better like that Prada smell, but it doesn't stick around forever when you're wearing it. And I was just so impressed by the wear time. If something can make it all the way through Tom and I recording the podcast, that speaks volumes. Like it's just a really, really good formula, regardless of the color that you choose. I chose Church Lady Coral and I love it. So 
Yeah, all right. We're all waiting on it. Release of the year. Say it with me. Why is L candy glaze? <laughs> I'm not even sorry, okay? So this is number 14. This is that brown that I gave, yeah, that I gave to Tom as a gift. And it was such a pleasure watching Tom sit there and rave about it on their video, being like, Kaki gave me this one and she nailed it. Like she nailed the color. It is my favorite. I love it so much. And when I run out, I'm gonna buy another one. I was just like, that's what you wanna hear when you give a heartfelt gift to a friend. When you pick something out for your friend, that is the kind of response that you want. Tom is that person. Tom is the person who, instead of saying LOL at your joke, will send you a voice memo of them laughing, okay? They're just a satisfying person to be friends with. They're just a lovely, lovely human. So anyway, yes, this is, I have the clear one knocking around. I have another clear one in the holiday packaging over here, but I'm saving it for my sister for Christmas. If you're unfamiliar at this point, I've been beating everybody over the head with these things. Everyone has. Even the skeptics, I feel like, once they try it, they're like, ah, it's really good. And like, by the time I left Philly and Kristen and Tom were still there visiting, by the time they left, Tom had bought one for Kristen because Tom was that converted. They were like, no, no, I need to enlighten you on this fantastic lip formula. It is, I'm gonna swatch it again. It's just so glossy and beautiful and comfortable and flattering and the colors are so good and it's incredibly nourishing. It's just kind of really hard to describe and honestly, if you're gonna get one, just get the clear because the clear is just a winner and then you can start exploring all the shades and everything, but you're not gonna be mad you got the clear. You're gonna finish it. I finished mine and then someone in my comments told me that they saw on TikTok that someone was able to drill a hole in theirs and get like half again as much lipstick out of it. It was a different one. And what I do, I drilled a hole in the bottom of mine and there really wasn't much left in there, but that's how much I liked it. And so I bought another one and then 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 I bought another one. So yeah, one, two, three, four, five. I have six, one is empty and one is going to my sister. So yeah, I really think that they did the thing on this one. I think YSL did the thing on this one. It's not just the release of the year in terms of what I liked the most, but it's the release of the year in terms of like, just being a sensation across the board and not being disappointing when you get it in your hands. I think there are so many things that came out this year and that come out every year that, you know, because of the algorithm and who it is that started the trend, they tend to become sensationalized. But the candy glaze is, is it's luxury and we need a win. You know, I'm out here, y'all should have seen me. My mom and I voted and we decided that the best thing to happen to humanity in 2023 is that they put the little wavy edges on the Charmin toilet paper. <laughs> and Jamie Lee Curtis was like, who did this? This is brilliant. It's on that level, but I think the candy glaze is even better than the wavy Charmin. So yeah, I think my camera just cut me off. Probably for good reason. That's how bad humanity needs a win right now. Usually I close out my best of the best video by doing my word of the year for this year. I think my word of the year this year is going to be rebirth. We're just everybody, it's happening for everybody right now. The way that things are cannot be the way that things shall remain. And the new year is a really good excuse for us all to take a hard look, okay? So I'm going for rebirth, renewal, change. You know, I've gone for healing, I've gone for this. I I'm entering my rebirth era. Who's with me? And I tend to be really prescient with these things. My word of the year for 2020 was unlearn. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, hopefully we'll all have a really pleasant and um, effective and lovely and uh, whatever, rebirth in 2024. And this doesn't mean this is my last video of the year because we're starting declutters, okay? That's, that's the next thing that's gonna happen here, which is great because it means I can do all my videos in my pajamas. <laughs> But yeah, y'all, I appreciate you being with me this year. I appreciate you putting up with me and all of my nonsense. And I really appreciate all of you who don't put up with my nonsense, you appreciate my nonsense. You know what I mean? There are people who, when I took kind of unannounced breaks from uploading, would come to me and they'd be like, I really miss your chaos. Like it's your specific energy that I show up for. And it's like, that's what's gonna keep me coming back is not the makeup and not people needing my opinions on it. It's the fact that getting on camera, I just get to be myself and relax 
into being who I am and I've gotten to a point on my channel where I've gathered a community where I feel like people get it and that we can all be weird and funny together. Y'all are a million times funnier than I am. My comments are hilarious. Every single time I see a tart palette, I go, yeah, mass pad looking ass because of one commenter. Tom and I, we talk about y'all by your usernames, by how funny you are, okay? The people who show up and say the funniest stuff. So it doesn't go unnoticed and I love y'all so much and I really, really, really appreciate you being here with me because this has not been an easy year for me and we did it and I couldn't have done it without you and I'm really looking forward to a fresh start in 2024. So I love y'all so much and make sure that you check out Ana Luisa using my links down below. They're doing amazing deals across the website for the holidays so you can get some really beautiful, heartfelt, meaningful gifts for your friends and family and that are beautiful, sustainable, and affordable. Y'all definitely check them out. Thank you to Ana Luisa for sponsoring a portion of today's video. I will put, I don't know, something up here. If you got through this and still want more of me, I doubt it. But anyway, if you made it to the end and you're not subscribed, cool people subscribe. You should subscribe if you're cool. Cool, it'd be cool if you did. Cool, 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 cool. And I'm officially out of words and I'm even a little bit hoarse. So I think we did it right. I think it's the way it's supposed to be. And I love y'all so freaking much. I love you so much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.